Welcome to Back in the Garden TV, Jeff Fox Show. It is your boy on a great Thursday here in the 305. Beautiful day in Miami. Great day to be alive here in Miami and enjoying life, man. As we get ready for the NFL this weekend in the AFC, Pittsburgh will be going to New England. I hate the Patriots. But anyway, I'll, I'll try to be civil here because we have to respect our elders. And a good friend of mine, Brian McKinney, his mom has written a book that I'm going to have to tell you about. And she's a wonderful lady. Um, Michelle Green. Michelle is the mother of NFL player Brian McKinney, again, uh, who hails from Woodbury High School and Lackawanna Junior College and the University of Miami. News number seven (laughs) overall pick in the NFL draft. Played 12 years in the NFL. Won a Super Bowl with the Baltimore Ravens. But let's (laughs) welcome the great Michelle Green. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you this this uh, this uh, fine Thursday? I'm fantastic. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What have you been up to, Michelle? I mean, it seems like every time I talk to you, uh, you got some exciting stuff going on. <laughs> well, I am now a author. I just wrote a book about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called Entitled about my life in the NFL. And what I went through as a mother in the NFL, but I think people don't really see that side of what we go through. And it, it's different because my book is about I got caught up in that life, that NFL life. Um, I worked two to three jobs from the time Bryant was two years old till he got into the league. Yeah. <clears throat> because I wanted to make sure that this is what he wanted to do. You know, because he didn't grow up playing football. So I didn't know if he was going to be like, um, when he got in the league, you know, because some guys change their mind. They don't like it when they get in the league. But um, he enjoyed it. So when I felt that he got comfortable in it, what I said was, okay, it's my time now. I I did. Like, I helped you get where you were. I helped you get through college. I did what I was supposed to do as a mom. I was your ride or die mom. From day one all the way up, never missed a game at the U, was always on the road with you. And even at Lackawanna, we was up there wherever, you know, wherever he played. And I just felt like once he got in the lead and got established, I was done. I was tired. I was tired of working. Um, I was just, it was my time now. It was my time to have fun. And that's what I did. I had fun. (laughs) Uh, and, and 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 you you know what you guys deserve that. I mean, I see moms at the park every weekend here in Miami, especially in Miami where Pop Warner football is so big, and everybody right. has that dream that their son is going to make it big to the National Football League. Your dream actually came true, and I guess uh, another question would be, what could possibly go wrong from there when you've made it? That's well, uh, I'm going to tell you, well, see, my dream wasn't, because Brian didn't play in any Pop Warner. See, Brian was a late bloom, bloom, bloomer. He didn't mm-hmm. start playing until high school. So I didn't go through all that. Like, he played basketball. I, but I, he had to play a sport when he was young because he was big. And I said, right. you guys want to sit around here and eat me out of house home. You got to play a sport. <laughs> so he wrestled. He played basketball. But he didn't play football until he got in high school. And the only reason why he did that was because some of his friends went out. So he said, well, I'm going to go out too. And that's how he got involved in football. But, see, I wasn't sure that – and then when he got to the U, you know, he got, had all his friends there, you know, Reed, and he was mm-hmm. roommates with Shockey. So he was just having a good time. But now the party's over. Now it's the real world. Will you still like, you know, football once you get in there? And so happened he did. So with me – um, I think I got too comfortable in it. I was hanging around with ball and mom, and we was rolling out. We was all over the United States. We would do, we were just all over, do whatever we wanted, did everything. And I got comfortable with that, living that life. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Deep down inside, I wasn't happy. So the question is, how could you have whatever you went from rags to riches? Because I didn't put things in the proper order and, how, and perspective how it should be. You understand right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I went to the left and stayed there for a minute. And when I realized this is not really, this does not fulfill me like I thought it would. You have everything you ever wanted and you're still not happy. Something's wrong. And once I dug in and, and, and got out of that box and looked out the, on the outside and looked in, and I said, you know what, my priorities 
uh, was in the wrong place. I got caught up in material things. And wow. that was, that's when the bell went off for me. And I said, no, this is not it. Mm-mm, I'm not happy. And that's when I had to make a change. And, that, and that's what I did. And I said, you know what? I'm going to tell my story because it's my story. Um, I'm not ashamed of it. I own it. Yes. And it, everybody saw me out. I was hanging out in Miami. I was all over the place. You know, right. it wasn't nothing for me to be in um, one state and then shoot out to um, uh, Vegas for a couple of days during the middle of the week and then come back to another state for a game. That was how I, I did. You know, I stayed. I never drove. I always had car service wherever I went. But like I said, I, you know, my background was I worked two and three jobs. See, that was a norm for me. So when you come out of that and you get into this new, like, oh, my gosh, like, oh, this is fun. I like it. I thought I did, but I really wasn't happy. So what I did was I had to reevaluate myself. Um, I had to take myself out of that, that, that what I was in, and say, you know what, this is not how it's supposed to be. Let me go back to my humble beginning. Okay. And that's what I did, and that's when I found I got my happiness back when I went back to my humble beginnings. We're speaking with Michelle Green. She is the mother of ex NFL star and the you, Bright McKinney, right. who played there a long okay. time and won a Super Bowl with the Ravens. Uh, the name of her book, she's an author and an NFL mom, as I just told you guys, entitled An NFL Mom Story of the Pitfalls of Money and Power. And we all want money and power. But, you know, <laughs> I've got to give you credit, Michelle, You for you to, to humble yourself and, and to write a book and tell your story. This is going to help a lot of people out there. When did you notice that well, you need to refocus? I think it was um, probably towards um, – I'm going to say in the middle of his career because I'm going I'm to tell you it was another time, too, when, okay, so now, granted, I, I got a house, had a four-bedroom home in Jersey, then I have, a, a, you know, a place in Miami. Mm-hmm. Then um, I have two cars. One, I had a truck, an SUV, and I had a Benz. So I was like, um, I am tired of, I, I, I just wanted a new car. Why? Because I like the color. See, that's what I'm saying. This is right. when it started right. to get petty. So we went, I took him, as a matter of fact, it was down there, down in Miami. I took him to the um, dealer, and um, he looked at the car. Then he looked at the price. He was like, wait, what? What's wrong with the one you got? I was like, nothing, but I think this is so, I like this. He was like, he didn't say anything. Right. To this day, he you never mom. said yes you can't or say no. To mom. You can't say no to mom. He didn't say if nothing. Have, we walked out the store. Phone. We walked out the car dealer. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you're the NFL. If mom, whatever mom wants, mom gets. I mean, that's typically yeah, how that a lot day. of us think. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's how a lot of us think. Yeah, so was... Brian said no. He said no. No, he, he didn't say mom. anything. He just he right. left. He walked out. He was like, oh, and we walked out. He didn't say anything. <laughs> okay. Because you already have a car. He was like, right. you already have one. Wait, like, what? Like so, in his head, he was like, Mm-mm. so he didn't say no. He just said, mm, all right, and we walked out. Never went back in. He never said anything about it again. So, and you know, I knew what that meant. That was a yes. no right there. Wow, what an so amazing. So I said, you know story. what? Yeah, let me get myself together and get get my um, priorities right and get my mind in perspective. And so, but I'll tell you what I did though. What I did mm-hmm. though, I did have my own little um, nest egg. Because I always wanted to make sure if something happened or if he decided to get married, I knew that I would have to play, you know, take a back seat on that. So I wanted to make sure I was good. So that's one thing I did do was um, make sure that I was um, had my nest egg off, you know, back in the back in the cut. Mm-hmm. But um, I just had to change my uh, way of thinking. And, you know, I got caught up. I got caught up. Yes, I did. But you I'm know, I, I, I've interviewed Brian a few times on, on our show, and we've hung out with him before. I've even visited the house, and I think he had one day he had the, the Bad Girls Challenge being filmed there. And it was just such a cool mm-hmm. guy, such a fun-loving person. But then the other time when I saw him most recently, he seemed a bit spiritual. It, there was a slight change. Is that something that oh, you yeah, went through yeah. as well? Well, yes, because I am now in school. I'm a junior and yes, I am um, 
my studies are um, Christian ministries. So um, I am doing that um, because I was in school before, but I put that to the side because I devoted my time to him. You know, I yeah. said, um, yes. I need to help you to get to because you. I didn't finish my college degree, but I want to make sure that he went did what he was supposed to do and he did. So now that now I'm getting my college degree now, I'm I'm, I'm I'm like you know it's never too late. I don't care how old you are, it's never too late. And um, I said this is what I want to do, and I want to continue on. So yes, I am in um, theology. Yeah, that's my wow. Major, theology. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You should, you should be proud of you should be proud of your son as well. I mean, he's accomplished so much off the field, and you can just tell that he has. Um, again, I mean, you know, when you're young and, and you come into wealth. It, it can happen to yeah. any of us, but to come back right. and 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 realize that hey, I I need to make a change here in the middle of yeah. all of this is is really really right. a great thing that you guys have done. So Thank how has the book been received? Uh, you know, it's funny. Even um, I haven't had young men come to me and say that they. This one guy said to me, he said you know, your book had ministered to me. I'm like, really? So you don't know what people are going through. I heard so many different people say to me, um, because I've been talking a book about how a lot of my things, my material things were my little gods, and they were saying like, wow, I never even noticed that in myself now. You know what? So I need to check myself because I think I am starting to um, not say worship, but you know, just be preoccupied with a lot of material things more so, you know, than your spiritual growth. So I think it just it affects people in different ways, and, and, it, and plus how you receive it as well. Yeah, you certainly ought to be commended because you talked about your story, your humble beginnings, you know, the, the multiple jobs and, and having to take yeah. care of young Brian, and then all of a sudden there's all of this money and this power and this prestige, and everybody's treating you differently yeah, um, well, that's a lot to absorb. That is a lot to absorb, and that. But the thing is that you recognized it. You recognized right, it, and for yeah. that, you know, I, I got to give you credit for that. Yeah, I think that um, when you started, and see too, like the, your friends, of course, your your friends, they think you changed. I didn't change as far as being myself. I was just able to that I always wanted. I was able to purchase them. It's just with me, I purchased, purchased a lot of things, not just one. I, I did my, you know, uh, in quantities and not um, just maybe one here or there. That's where I went overboard in, in making purchases of shoes and handbags, that type of thing. Um, but it's just that um, I, now I surround myself with positive people, you right. know, and the people are going to keep me in check. Too. That's a, you know you gotta make sure you gotta have friends around you who gonna keep you in check too, and not be scared to say anything to you because guess what, you know they're afraid that they might not get something if you if they say anything to you. So they're not gonna say anything. They want like oh, you know what I'm just gonna chill because I, she might want to get me something. So no, I have myself now with positive people. We're all on the same page, and, and that's how it is now. I love what you wrote. Anything you hold on too tightly, you will lose. It is easy to drift into will. self, but every now and then you have to take a self-examination and keep yourself in check and access where your headspace is. That is deep. That is deep. <laughs> that is deep because it's so easy for us all, if you come into wealth or you come into money, to lose power. I mean, to lose perspective, rather. To lose perspective right. and, you have to and, remember, and forget who right. we are. Yeah, exactly. I was a single parent. We didn't have that growing up. And I didn't know anybody in that same bracket like that. So it's hard. I thought I was doing good. I did the best that I could at that time. And like I just said, I just started drifting, and, and I just got caught up. But, you know, at the end, it's all good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm good. So it worked out. What's next for you, Michelle Green? I feel like I'm talking to a star. Michelle Green, mother ah. of uh, XNFL star Brian McKinney. Seriously, I've seen you on V. I've seen you on TV. And now you're, you're, you're an author, and I'm sure this book is going to do great things. What's next for you, though, as an NFL mom? You've got so much to offer and, and so much to share. Uh, I feel like this isn't the end for you. This is just the beginning. Well, um, we, I am involved in our organization, um, the Professional Football Players and Mothers Association. We have a lot of moms that are in this organization from all over players, um, 
you know, we have retired players like um, Eddie George's mother, Jerome Bettis's mom, um, Donovan McNagg's mother. We have a mom that are we have moms. The Campbell Soup Lady. Matter of fact. I beg your pardon. The Campbell Soup Lady, Donovan McNagg's mom. What's, yes. What's, what's yep. Yeah. She's the parents' president. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Reggie Wayne, um, Serena Butler, um, Gino Atkins' mom is in it. We have a lot of moms in Miami, a good uh, group in Miami that are in the organization. So I just want to now get involved in that, build us up so we'll be known throughout because we're about serving the community, serving where our sons played at and where they live at. And we will be in um, Fort Lauderdale in July having a um, a conference. And, you know, we just want to um, start building relationships and, and giving back to the community as mothers along with our sons. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by the Jeff Fox Show. Uh, wonderful, wonderful interview, Michelle Green. Thank you, Michelle Green. And how's Brian doing? I, I haven't t- talked to him in a while. Um, he is doing working out. <laughs> the thing yeah, you know what? Day. That's right. He, he does that boxing thing down there at Black Hill Gym in Hollywood. I went there one day. They almost killed me. Yes. Um, I was down for the um, Christmas holidays. I'll be back next week. I'm going to the Pro Bowl and Super Bowl. So I'll be back working out with them as well. So, yeah, but he, he, listen, he has me. I go to spin class. We do hot yoga. We do boxing. We do it all. Yeah, I love it down there. It's, it's high intensity, and they got some music going. It's a good thing uh, that they got yeah. going on. Make, make sure you go out there and get the book, folks. Once again, it's called Entitled, uh, written by Michelle it's Green. Amazon.com. Uh, the uh, Pitfalls of Money and uh, Power. Uh, what, give them some information on the book and how they can get it. Um, you can get it it's at um, Amazon.com for twelve ninety nine. So just go on to Amazon.com and you'll have it. All right. You know anybody out there that's getting too big for their britches, let's give them that book. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> and right. Title. That's right. You got some good reading right there. Thank you, Michelle Green. Thanks for stopping by the Thank Jump Fox Show. Talk to you again. All righty. Bye. All right now. That's Michelle Green, mother of Bryant McKinney, a good friend of the Jeff Fox Show. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back on the other side. Thanks, Michelle. 